everyone welcome back to my channel and in this week's garden update I want to show you around the raised garden bed area which you briefly just saw there in the intro and at the moment a lot of the plants in there are still quite small I've got tiny little seedlings that I'm waiting for them just to start to take off which I find takes a while um, they tend to just sit in the ground for a couple of weeks, they don't put on much growth and then all of a sudden they just like burst into growth and there's no stopping them and I feel like I'm so close to that happening. And also in this video I'm going to do a lavender harvest and I'm going to use these dried flowers to make some crafty DIY lavender sachets which are a perfect inexpensive homemade Christmas gift um, and the material even the material that I use in um, to make the little pages um, I purchased from an op shop they're actually just some old neck curtains so it's just really cheap to make but they look so pretty and I can't wait to share that with you and at the very end of this video um, I want to have a chat to you about this channel and the future of it and um, have a little talk about content ideas but before we get into all of that, why don't you just go and sit back and relax for a few minutes and I'll show you around. Over here at the raised garden beds, they're all pretty much planted out now. Um, I did have to replace a couple of seedlings that were struggling a bit. And thankfully I do keep backups until I feel confident that the plants are nice and strong. So, um, I'm starting to give my backups away now but let me go through some of these beds with you and give you an idea of what I've got in each one so in this one here I've got some beans along the side that will grow over this archway and they're the red noodle beans and then I have some plants along the front here which are Thai basil and then I have um, six tomato plants what I'll do is I'll write the name in the description below of all my varieties I finally got in um, I think it's 30 plants sorry that's the train <laughs> cue the train whenever I try and record um, okay so um, 30 tomato plants and I have another six that are tiny little seedlings which will be my next load to go in and hopefully that will extend my tomato growing season and you can see here that I put some stakes in and um, I bought like 17 of these yesterday and they're 280 each and um, because I'm doing a lot more tomato plants this year I really needed them and um, and I do need to get more, but I'm trying to spread out the cost over a few weeks because when you add getting the steaks and your mulch and your um, organic um, fertilizer, it really all adds up um, to be, you know, quite expensive. And then let's have a look in this bed. So this is the bed where I have my overwintered capsicums and chilies. And don't forget, I'm not really sure what they all are because um, a couple of times over winter we had lots of wind come through my garden and knocked my plants over and labels although I do know what this one is this is the um, striped capsicum and I can tell from the variegation on the leaves and I do have some capsicums forming on this plant over here you can see them there which is exciting and this one over here, I wasn't sure what to do with it because I hadn't seen any growth on it. And I was scratching back the um, branches, um, the stem, sorry, to see if they were still alive. And they were. But then look what I discovered this week. If you have a look down here. Finally, I've got some um, fresh growth on it. So I'm going to give it a bit longer and see how it goes. So over in this bed I have some of my favorite tomatoes which are the Thai pink egg tomatoes I've got two there I've also got some um, other flowering plants in here and I've got my Lebanese cucumbers I did have a tiger melon but it died off but not to worry I'll just replace it and then I've got a zucchini I'm much better at spacing my plants this year um, I have to keep on reminding myself that this plant will get huge. It will definitely fill up this whole section. I may even cover these basil plants that I put in, but we'll see. 
This bed here, I have some comfrey, which is really good to make comfrey tea. Um, I have this salvia, I probably need to take that one out. And then I did have, I think it was the Kajari melon, but that died, so I need to replace that. And then I have some basil. This bed here has some dahlias. And then over here, I have more tomatoes. I'll write all the names, as I said, in the description below. And then a companion plant for tomatoes are marigolds. So I've got a couple there. And these are actually the African um, marigolds. They get really large, these plants, and I love them. Especially the flowers. They're much bigger than, you know, your standard marigolds. And here we've got some petunias. Swing around this way. Here are some of my eggplants and I will show you a bit later. My eggplants this year, oh, it's been such a struggle to grow them. Like last year it was fine and I grew lots of lovely varieties. But this year um, I've had to re-sow the seeds around three times and I'll show you the size of the ones I sowed. They're tiny. So I actually ended up buying these ones and they cost me about $4 each. And you know what, I think that's absolutely fine because for $4 the amount of produce I'll get off each plant will be well worth it and then in this bed I have some chilies so what I'm going to do with my chilies is I'll put a stake in and I'll put a red flag or something on it to stop my kids eating them because I do let them come out here and just you know forage for food I guess you'd say and I want to make sure that they don't go near them so I thought you know a red flag might be a great idea indication to them that they know they're not meant to go near it um, here I've got, there's another um, cucumber, these are some more um, beans and then I've got some more tomatoes in here. So you can see a lot of the garden beds are taken up with tomatoes um, but don't forget I do have lots of other areas where I've got my vining crops um, and I'm happy enough to have most of the tomatoes in this one place so I can keep an eye on them. Um, another thing I did with my tomatoes is um, the front rows, the ones on the outside of the garden beds. So if you're looking in, these are the tomato plants you'll see first. Um, I put some of the smaller um, growing varieties in there, like your currant tomatoes, your cherry tomatoes, because they're the ones the fruit flies don't seem to go near. So I won't need to bag them up. So when you're looking into the vegetable garden, um, you won't be seeing lots of white bags and the ones that I do need to bag I've put on the back rows because if I don't do, do it the fruit flies are shocking they will just completely take entire tomato crops um, and I really want to have a really nice selection this year of tomatoes here are those eggplant seedlings which I spoke about you can see they're still so tiny but I will continue to grow them um, I'm not sure if I'll get any harvest from them for this year because by the time they get large enough the weather may start to cool down but I will overwinter them and you can see some of the labels have question marks on them and that's because um, we had another windstorm and it knocked all my labels off. Here in the back garden I have this big patch of lavender and you can see that the flowers are starting to dry out on the plant so I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of these to make some lovely lavender sachets. Gently with my finger and thumb I remove these dried flowers and I gather them all up into a pile along with other materials which I need. Here's some twine and then I have these lace net curtains which I picked up from the op shop or thrift store and I particularly like these ones because if you have a look here at the very end of the curtain it has a really nice design and this is the part that I'm actually going to use to make the pouches. So I cut off a piece of that now I am certainly not a great sewer um, but you can see here I hand stitched along one, the bottom and one side and um, I would use some white tread if I had it. I left the top bit open so I could stuff it up with some of that dried lavender which I will do now and usually you probably fill it about maybe three quarters of the way full then I just get the twine 
tie a knot on the top, do a little bow, and that's pretty much it. Um, you can go and have a look for some more lavender plants. I have this other one in the garden. I cut off a couple of um, sprigs of that and all I did with these was I inserted them into behind the bow as you can see here and I think that's just a nice little detail to add and that's it. I'm going to start making a few more of these over the next week to give away at Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and I did say that I'd pop back on here at the very end just to chat a bit about um, this channel and my thoughts on the future of it and I wanted to share with you that um, next February my youngest child will be starting primary school so I'll have three kids in school and I'll have a bit of extra time so I was thinking that I may try and do two videos a week. So I'll still do my Friday general garden update, but I'll have one additional video. And I wanted to ask you guys, um, my subscribers, what you would like to see in these extra videos. Um, if you have any suggestions, could you please put them in the comments below so I can start thinking about and planning next for next year. Um, so stuff like, you know, how-tos, DIY upcycle projects, things like that. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to see? And speaking of future videos, I really, really, and I'm hoping to do it next week if I have enough time, I want to make a video um, all about gardening in drought. Um, like, say, um, my favourite drought-tolerant plants in my garden, what I do to minimise its impact, stuff like that. So let's hope I get it together for next week. If not, I will be coming up soon. So that's about it from me for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next Friday.